guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Nero Asanea saying hello. So, so I, as you may or may not know, I've recently become an esthetician and I decided to go into business for myself. And I really had a long journey trying to figure out all the tips and tricks and trying to figure out everything to make sure that I set myself up right and that I set myself up for success. It's definitely a journey and one I'm hoping you guys will join me on and so it's gonna be a new set of series. I know I've done some um, videos in the past where I talked about kind of my esthetician school career um, and things that I was learning so now I hope you guys will get to join me on this journey as I build my business so I'm in my room today and I will I just got done seeing clients so I need to clean it up so um, I will put in so some clips though of what the room looks like when it's nice and clean and ready um, but uh, I had to come on in a rush today so I didn't quite I I, I have video okay uh, but before we get started, before we go on with that, I do want to say, hey, welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. You guys are the real MVP. And if this is your first time here because you saw something about being an esthetician, then hey, welcome, welcome. Come on in. Uh, my name is Nao. I'm also Nao. Usually I do a lot of... Uh, uh, I used to do a lot of makeup beauty videos. I do a lot of handbags, shoes, that kind of stuff, really lifestyle type videos uh, with a luxury mindset. And I, you know, looking at that luxury, <laughs> looking at that luxury mindset and looking at just who I am and where I wanted to be next in my life and my career, I decided to fulfill a lifelong dream of going to esthetician school. And so I've decided to keep going on that journey uh, and I'll have a separate video that talks about how I started on my journey really. Uh, but I didn't want to uh, go into how I started in my space because I, I know everyone talks about how when you're done with school, uh, how you go about setting up. So that's what I wanted to talk about and I think my biggest tip really that is so overlooked by people but which i found really helped me just jump start and get right into it was that i started off by sharing a space i have started off by sharing a space and what i mean by that is that i basically uh went online looked in different areas, had some good tips about where to look and found a space, a suite that I could share with someone. And I, I say that as the number one easiest tip of how to jump into your solo career is to find a space that you can share with someone. It has definitely had a lot of its benefits, which I'm gonna go into today. Um, but one thing I wanted to start off with with finding a space is I had people advise me because I do have a business coach and one of the things that everyone said was make sure you find a room, a space, uh, a suite in an area, in a physical area that you want to start your business in. Uh, my long term goal is to have my own day spa for now as I'm learning the business, getting better at my trade. I just decided to start up with the room, build my clientele that way. And so, um, but I did look at the demographics of the area that I wanted to be in, the business policies, the city that the, the business policies, business requirements of the city that I wanted to be in. Um, and then that way, and the very specific area, like within like less than a five mile radius, of the very less than a five mile radius of the area that I uh, will one day build up my spa. And so, and the number one tip that people would say to, for me to do that was that they said, if you are looking in your area that you ultimately want to end up in is because when you move into your own place you don't want to lose clientele so was i to open up here and then six months a year two years down the line i want to open somewhere else that's 15 miles away i'm going to lose half my clientele that i have built in this area and this location and so it's best for big uh and so the tip was it's best to look in the place 
where you will ultimately want to build out. So that was the number one thing. So as I started looking, trying to find a place, I looked absolutely everywhere. I went, um, so as I started looking, trying to find a place, I did identify some really good ways that you can find a room that you want to share. Uh, one of the best resources that I really found was my school that I went to. They have postings where they will list jobs and they also have postings where they will list rooms for rent, space for rent, etc. So I was able to look there to see what was in that location, location, location area that I wanted to look at. So that was um, a great resource for me there. I also just started, um, you know, walking around, making sure that I really did want this location, this area. And so by walking and seeing what was here, it's a, I, I live in a walkable city, depending on the months, of course. Uh, I was able to see what spaces were out here, what suites were out here, what was available. Uh, and then, of course, I would go on to websites such as Craigslist. I would go on to Facebook groups to see who was renting out spaces and in what areas they were renting out spaces and that was a really great way especially the facebook groups they were really a great way to just kind of see well um what's out here um and that that was definitely a great tip so one of the other benefits that really helped me jumpstart it was obviously sharing the space and i say that it's a benefit because depending on, of course, where you want to share your space and who you're sharing your space with. So I really, part of my focus looking for a space to share was what were the amenities in the overall place? Was it a salon suites type of things, Phoenix suites type of things? Or was it a nail salon? Because a lot of nail salons are looking for estheticians uh, mainly to do eyebrows, but a lot of nail salons are looking for estheticians in their places. Uh, was it a day spa or or an area where they had rooms for rent that they were renting out to estheticians and so on. So there's a lot of places out there that are advertising rooms to rent that are other than just the estheticians themselves. The benefit of sharing a room though with an esthetician, my favorite benefit so far that has worked for me, is that a lot of times that esthetician has equipment that they're willing to share. They have um, knowledge sometimes that they're willing to share. I was pleasantly surprised by how many people were willing to mentor me and just say, oh my gosh, you're new in the business, you're still excited, you're hungry, you're building your clientele, come on in uh, and, and you can use my space and let me teach you what I what I learned so I kind of like that it kind of really helped me with this uh, anxiety that I had about just starting out on my own and building clientele and how am I really going to learn the business so definitely I was very very happy with how many people who are sharing their rooms are also willing to share their knowledge another thing about sharing a room is of course like I said the equipment now uh, here I think you can just see there's like a little mini fridge over here and then there is also a mini towel warmer here in the room that I'm in. Uh, you saw in the video there's lights, there's a uh, cabinetry, there's a, a uh, there's a sink in here, there's a big uh, machine that has a face scrubber etc. There's a lot of equipment in here that the lady that I share this room with has been very generous and said to me you can use what you need to use. Now granted um, uh, there's some stuff of my own that I have brought in as well. So uh, like for one, this particular towel warmer here is extremely small. It only fits like five towels, which the way I do a facial, depending on what kind of facial, that's enough for one person. And it's, it's basically not enough if I'm seeing more than two, actually if I'm seeing more than one person in here, then I gotta like reload, 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 which as you know, can be a problem. So I've definitely um, had to do a new one. I also got myself my own wax pot because I just didn't like the one that the lady was using and I wanted something a little bigger, a little bit more modern. Um, 
uh, and just to start over. So I got my own wax pot. Um, and then also there's of course um, some of my own products. I don't use her products. I don't use her skincare products. Uh, she has said if there's something I want to use here and there, of course I'm more, you know, she's, she's open to it. But I've made sure that I have my own products so that I we, we can you know keep a separation at some point um and you know and that depends i had some people who are like my product is like walked away you know don't touch my things and i think to me there's a certain level of generosity in that i i was way more enthused obviously as a new esthetician with the people who were like yeah sure you can use my um my my towel warmer uh, I mean the stuff is in there I also kind of looked at it as that it was part of paying them right I included it into the rent that they were charging so if someone is share my room but I'm gonna charge you six seven hundred dollars and you can't touch any of my stuff then what's the point um, um, but for the most part most people were like if I'm not here you can use this or oh, I'll teach you how to use this machine or oh, I'll put you in contact with my rep if you uh, don't know how to use like uh, the ProCell machine up here uh, she's like hey if you want to learn how to do that I'll put you in touch with my with my rep that kind of stuff very very generous also with an established room there's a bed already in here for the most part there's a stool already in here there's a cart there's this trash cans and so on so it really makes it easier for my pocketbook the initial outlay because I didn't have to go gosh I gotta buy a bed I gotta buy a cabinet I gotta buy this I gotta buy that I only had to focus on the essentials because the largest stuff was already in the room and Honestly, out of the five or six different places that I went to and I was looking for a room to share, those kinds of things was what they were willing to share with me. You can use my bed, you can use my cart, you can use my cabinet. Very, very generous. So that really just left, like I said, the ultimate essentials that I wanted, such as the specific product lines that I wanted to carry, the wax pot that I wanted to carry, the towel warmer, and then I also had to set up my own payment system. So I have um, Vagaro, I do use Vagaro, and I had to set up my own card reader, and I had to set up my own Venmo, etc. cetera, uh, and different systems for my clients to compensate me. Uh, the the benefit the other benefit also is because i'm subleasing the space well i guess you could say it's either a benefit or not a benefit you have to be really careful and read your lease agreement with the person that you're sharing with um you gotta really make sure that you have access to the space at all times i have keys to the building i can come in and go as i choose uh you gotta make sure um that your stuff is safe and secure i share the room with one other person she's not here very often there's not all it's not very busy in here i feel safe leaving my product i don't um i am gonna get a locked cabinet for my retail product once i start retailing uh retailing aggressively um but i do have i will have a locked cabinet for that just so you know i don't have to be concerned about um you know product theft and product loss um, and also you just want to make sure that you read the lease, make sure that the rent you're paying is really going towards the actual rent of the place. I, I, I just, you know, that, not that I was concerned, I, I'm with a lady who's great and lovely, but should she get kicked out of the greatest suite as a whole, then I get kicked out of as the greater place as a whole. Um, I'm not in a salon suite or anything like that, I'm actually in a boutique like day spa. Um, but that's something that we, we still have to be careful with. She still has a landlord. She doesn't own this building. Should she, you know, even if she owned the building, there could have been a mortgage. But should something happen there, I want to make sure that I'm protected uh, and that I can continue, either continue to be in this space or that she notifies me in a timely manner so that I know that it's time for me to also move. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's the disadvantage of sharing a space in that it's very, very dependent on the person you're sharing with. Now, if you're really good and really smart about that, I would still encourage you to have your own separate relationship with the official landlord and discuss it with your person. I mean, there was some people, there was one lady that I talked to who knew she was gonna go out of business within the year because she was moving, grandkids, etc. And she was like, hey, come in, share my space with me. If I see your drive, you see your potential, 
you could end up taking over the whole lease if you can manage it financially etc so that was really really like a good way that would have pushed me to keep going keep growing um, and that's also kind of harks back to the mentorship aspect that i was talking about and that you want people who are willing to help willing to teach you willing to guide you. yeah i'm trying to think yeah so really just find a place that you vibe with i i know ultimately what i want my own boutique day spa to look like i want it to be glam i want it to have very positive very elegant very classic vibe that's also very glam and i made sure that i kept that in mind i, I wanted to make sure that my space that people coming into my space would have that vibe right you gotta uh, create your ideal client and i wanted my ideal client to have a certain vibe a certain elegance you know committed to their treatments obviously a re returning uh client and i wanted them to walk in the door and and feel the vibe and that's the best thing i think about where i am because you walk in the door and it's got a certain aesthetic to it you feel comfortable and at home and you know you're in the right kind of space and uh, some of the rooms that I went to, some of the spaces that I wanted to share with people, I walked in the door and I was immediately like, oh my gosh, I would change, da, 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 da. which as the sub lease person, you cannot do. Like I would have had to get her permission and her landlord's permission to change certain things, right? So that was something that made me just really like walk in the door. There were some buildings I just drove up to the building and immediately knew that I wasn't going to take it um, because it just wasn't the fit that I was looking for. And let me tell you something, at the end of the day, location was more important. The fit was, it was more important. The the vibe, the energy, the person that I was talking to, all of that for me at the end of the day was more important than what is the rent going to be? Because I know myself and I know my clientele and I know that I had prepped for this. So I know that, hey, I can pay the rent. That's, I mean, obviously I wasn't gonna pay full prices rent for the room I was sharing, but you know what I'm saying? I knew that I could cover that, but I wanted to make sure that I was in a space where I would walk in the door and be like, I'm home, that kind of vibe. So that was important um, to make sure that we, we gelled, the space gelled, the location gelled, all of those things were really part of what went into like, okay, I'm going to rent this room or I'm going to rent the suite or this is where I want to end up. So yeah, but I just I guess I just wanted to kind of like share some tips and some thoughts on really something that I think is overlooked in the industry when I was watching all these videos about, oh, how much does it cost to be a solo esthetician? How much does it cost to start up? I feel like everybody went to, you know, your fees, your insurance, your this, this, this and this. And a lot of people overlooked one of the easiest way to minimize your startup fees, to minimize your operating costs right off the bat, to um, kind of like be able to start day one, really day one. When the day I walked into this space, I felt like I could have just sat down and started working because everything was already in here. I would have needed maybe an hour to familiarize myself with everything, but everything that I needed was already in here and all I had to do was sit down and start working. So that for me was a huge advantage and the easiest way to start as my solo esthetician career. And so far it's working out very, very well and I'm pretty excited. So yeah. <laughs> So that's it guys, uh, just um, wanted to share a video on uh, the easiest way to start up as a solo esthetician and also some tips, tricks or things to look out for when you're going the route that I went which is sharing a room. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video. Let's chat again soon. I will be posting more and more content. Oh, by the way, if you're in Arizona, my spa is... Um, my spa, my room <laughs> is called Skin Alchemy Wax and Spa LLC. So that is Skin Alchemy Wax and Spa LLC. I'm in the Phoenix Scottsdale area. Come on in. I will hook you up. I have your skin glowing.
definitely. So thank you guys.